Hello everyone. In this course on visualizing data in Python using Matplotlib library, you will learn right from the basics and then we are going to progress to the advanced level of uh, charting using animation and 3D visualization in Python. The entire course is hands-on and most of the data that I'll be using in this course is static, but you can very well easily replace it with dynamic data. There are multiple data readers in Python, which will help you to get dynamic data from uh, different sources. So this Matplotlib, it's a, called a grandfather library of data visualization in Python. There are many more libraries which are built on top of Matplotlib. Probably we'll be creating a course on those as well later on. This library, it was created by John Hunter. And some of the major pros of this is it has a great control of every element in the figure. As we progress through the course, you'll come to know about, uh, you know, all the elements and how you can control them. And uh, you get a high quality output in many different file formats. And basically, it's very customizable. For things which are not covered here, or even if you want to just go to the official Matplotlib uh, web page, this is the uh, web page matplotlib.org. I will be using Jupyter IDE to show you all the commands, but you can very well easily replace it with any ID of your choice, the same commands would work. And uh, I've tried to divide this course into multiple sections. And I hope these are the logical sections. But in case there is some to and fro, as and when it will come, I'll be pointing them out to you. So without further ado, let's start a basic section one on line charts and how to use emojis, multicolored polygons into line charts. So I'm going to take data, which is in an array format. You can take lists, but I'm going to take the NumPy array, basically any data which is in the array format. So let's import our NumPy library and the matplotlib library. Matplotlib library per se is very vast. Within that, we are going to use basically most of the times the pyplot module. You can use any alias of your choice, but we will go with the alias which is been standard. So import numpy as mp, import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then we are going to create two arrays of the same length. And then we are going to see our first line command, which is very simple. You can just do plt.plot and you can pass on your arrays, the x and y axis. And you will see this line chart. Okay, so this this complete thing, this area, it is called the figure. This is your x axis. This is the y axis. This figure is then divided into subplots, which we will see later. So currently, the way I'm going to show you to you is I'm going to introduce one by one the elements of the line chart and then eventually the elements of all the matplotlib library. The semicolon that I have used here is to suppress one uh, particular output. So if I remove the semicolon, I'm going to get this output that this is of the kind of matplotlib.lines.line to the object. Since we do not want this. I'm going to put a semicolon here in Jupyter Notebook, or you can use a plt.show command. Okay, to just show this figure. So this is a very a simple 
a line chart which has uh, drawn this these two particular lines now i had said you that we need data which is of same length so what happens if you have data which is of different length then there would be a problem okay you will get a value error so this data has to be of the same length so consider it as plotting on your graph paper so it's not very easy to check like you know this one seven point then the second point is three three here the third point is five eleven okay here so let us see the first attribute which is the marker attribute and there are many markers which you can use the marker that i am going to use here is o for a circle so you can see these markers it will mark the points these array points okay and then it becomes very easy to visualize them you can use different marker properties like marker size to increase or decrease the length of your marker okay. you can also use the marker color So I've just part uh, with the mark and the marker color. So marker color, it has two colors: marker face color and marker edge color. So we are going to use the marker face color, and we will see that the complete face is turned to red. I'll be showing you multiple different properties of markers later on. you can use mfc for the marker face color ms for the marker size then the next property that we are going to see is the line style i'm also going to show you later on the different markers that you can use let's see the line style the line style there are four line styles that are possible the one which is default is your solid line style the second is dotted and to the line itself you can have you can give colors so this is a dotted line with a green color so this line style property so you we had seen the solid which is by default then you will have a dotted then a dash dot and the dashed okay. so this is a dash and a dot and if you use the dashed it will be all dashed style so you can use this four different line styles and you can use multiple different markers so o is for solid if you do a dot it is a point which is a smaller circle then you can have a a pentagon shape which is p a hexagon shape h and then there are different markers numbering from 1 to 12 which will give you some different styles all right so uh, on the matplotlib.org there is a list of markers which you can use okay and if you use some marker which is not there like if you try to use 100 a marker which is not there then you will get a error a value error so you will have to use markers which are available within the library so for a quick reference you can go there generally i tend to use a, a dot or a o but whichever uh, style you like you can use the colors that you can use is red green blue black so by default you can use rgb you can use your cyan cy you can use k for black you can use 
W for white. You can also use hexa decimal colors. And there are some named colors which are defined by default. You can use those as well. So one of the named colors is dark green. And if the name color is some color you're trying to put in a not defined, again, you'll get a value error. To use a hexadecimal, so the uh, I hope you're aware of the hexadecimal color scheme. So first two for red, second two for RGB. So red, green, and blue colors. And the maximum that you can have is the FF values, which is white. This is your black. Within this, you can have any color of your choice. So the property that we have seen is the X coordinate, Y, the marker, the marker size, the marker face color, the line size, the color then you can also there are also properties for the line width if you want a line which is thicker you can keep on increasing this number now let's suppose that you want to print multiple lines within the same graph okay so what i'm going to take is an example of temperature maximum minimum and the average temperature and I have this data so that you don't see me typing. And this I want to plot on the, on the same graph. Okay. And we have the weekdays from 1 to 8. So from 1 to 7. And you have these 7 temperatures. The way you can plot all these 3 lines on the same uh, figure is that you need to use this plot command multiple times. So on your x-axis is the weakness, on the y-axis is the temperature maximum, and this is a shortcut way to give your color, marker, and your line style. So green color, this color is not for the marker, this is the line color, the green, the marker, and your line style. So you can have the minimum, maximum. So let's put the max as red because it will be hot. Minimum let us put as blue. And let's try to give a different marker here. And a different line style. So you have plot the weekdays, the maximum temperature. Let's plot the average temperature. Average temperature in black. Let's give a diamond to the average. And I'm ignoring the line style. So it should take solid by default. And here I want a dash and a dot. Okay. So in the same Jupyter cell, you are going to use all the three plot commands. And then you're going to do plt.show. So with this, you are going to see three lines in the same graph. Okay. So this is your minimum temperature. This is your maximum temperature. And this is your average temperature. So when you give, gave nothing for the average temperature, you're getting a scatter plot. You're not getting the line at all. So let us give a. And I've given a wrong style. So let me put this as a dotted in the line style. Okay, so this is a dotted line style. So whenever you give something wrong, you will get a value error. Okay. So, but now if you see, look at the axis. So your days are beginning from one, and there is some uh, small. 
space which is left here it begins from 1 to 7 because that is the values in your weekdays from 1 to 7 it's a list and the temperature is beginning from 25 to 42 so it is taking the minimum temperature 25 leaving some space here and going up to maximum and leaving some space on the above okay and we do not know which line is what just by looking at this figure if you export this figure you will not come to know which is the uh, minimum average and the maximum temperature so the first thing we are going to do is we are going to put a legend and the second thing is then we are going to adjust the axis so the way to put a legend is you will have to give a text to each of these See, you'll have to give a label So this is my max temp. Okay. So after giving the label, you have to use a function called plt dot legend. So this plt dot legend by default will show the legend within uh, the graph and it will show where it finds space okay it is the best it takes the best place where it can show up this legend and then it will show this legend we are going to see the properties of the legend just in a moment before that we are going to adjust the scale so this scale if you want this range to begin from one okay if you want it like uh, you know this is starting from um, so I want this range as well to be one what you can do is you can do a plt dot y range and you can give the range to this y axis I have done a shift tab so that I can see the uh, example but it seems there is some issue with my Jupyter so either that's a problem or I'm using a long, okay, we need to use a Y limit and then you give the, the bottom and the top. Okay. So from 1 to 10 is nothing. So 1 to, uh, we have to go up to, I think it was 42. So let's go up to 45. all right so now this is your uh, graph now you can see that the ticks that are coming here these are the ticks the ticks are from one to seven and here the ticks are with the uh, spacing of five so it automatically matplotlib adjusts the ticks and later on i'll also show you how if you want to see all the ticks how you can do that but this seems okay for now uh this legend you can have you can tell where you want to position this legend okay that is a location for the legend but instead of positioning it within this space generally we would like to position it somewhere uh, on the upper right hand corner so on this you have a b box to anchor so this is boundary box to anchor there is this attribute boundary box to anchor and you can give the position where you want to anchor this box so for this the position that i'm giving is outside of the figure so zero and one is the outside x and zero and one is the y so it will come on the upper right hand corner so for boundary box to anchor it takes the position starting from here as 0 and here as 1 and then again from here as 0 and here as 1 so this point it takes as 1 1 leave some space and then adjust this uh, legend okay so the next thing then we have to do is give title to your x-axis and the y-axis like the x 
y limit if you want to set up the x limit you can set up the x limit since there is no requirement here i am not showing but similarly when you do a plt dot x limit you will get that function to set the limit so what we want to give is the x label we want to say that these are my days and for the y label you can give the labeling that this is the temperature and matplot label adjust here see we have not given horizontal or vertical it will automatically adjust as per you know the x-axis and the y-axis so that's a default behavior you can change it change that if you want so this is your uh, basic line graph Now, if it becomes difficult for us to see where it is, you also have a grid function. And it will showcase to you as a grid. These labels, these have attributes for your, you can change the, the uh, for the font, you can change the color, the font size, uh, the positioning you can do all of that okay. let us see one example of that in any of the text you can mention the font dictionary so you can mention either uh, the attributes either in an attribute format or directly in the dictionary format i'm mentioning it in the dictionary format so in the dictionary format you can give the font family, the color, weight, and size. Okay. And you would see this changing. You can also give a title to this graph. And let me do one thing. Let me keep the X label and the Y label with the same default font. And let's change only the font dictionary of this title. Okay. You can see this is a different font. If you do not want to use uh, uh, the entire font dictionary, just the color and the size, you can, in this title, you can get attributes like color, etc. And you can use them directly. If I'm not making a mistake in the spelling, this would work. Okay, this is the purple color. So if you want others to other things to remain the default, you can just use some of the uh, and just want to change the color, you can do that as well. So it's your choice. I'll just keep the code here so so that uh, you know if you are following me along with this video, then you will have this code for your easy reference. Now let's suppose you want to save this uh you know this chart 